Hey everybody, it's Eric at Nailed or Failed Reviews. Today we're doing a review video on this Dexter Axle heavy duty suspension upgrade kit. This is a shackle upgrade kit for people with single or double axle trailers to upgrade your quarter inch shackle that hangs off the leaf spring and the frame of your trailer to a half inch shackle with wet bolts. These are bolts, hollow, basically hollow bolts with zerks on the end that allow you to push grease through it so that a bushing can ride on there nice and smoothly. But if you have a single axle trailer, especially from Coachman, Forest River, or probably anybody out there, you really need to get under there and check out the issue that we're gonna get into right now on Nailed or Failed Reviews. We found a major problem when trying to upgrade our kit today, and we're gonna show you guys how you can hopefully fix it yourself if it's not too far gone, and you may need to take it into a shop. So let's get to it now on Nailed or Failed Reviews. Okay guys, so let's get into what I'm talking about with these Dexter Axle upgrade kits for your shackles. This should be a pretty simple, straightforward upgrade. Basically what it comes down to is taking apart your shackles um, that hang off of your axle and your leaf springs, pushing in some new ones, pushing in some bushings, and pushing through some grease. Put it all back together and you have a nice uh, you know, it's supposed to help with the suspension and just the feel of the ride of your trailer. But when we went to install ours on our 2018 Coachman Apex Nano 193 BHS, we found a major, major issue. Now, we hope we're not trying to scare anybody, but basically, after watching this video, you should really go out and check your single axle trailer, depending on the setup. We're going to show you guys exactly what we're talking about right now. So uh, just stay tuned for that information. And then we're gonna get into showing you the actual installation of this kit, how we're gonna fix the problem that we're talking about. It's not the best fix, but it's what we're able to do as a DIY person. And again, we'll get into all those details. So what am I talking about? Again, well, again, the uh, wet bolt heavy duty shackle kit from Dexter again is this. It is basically an upgrade kit so that you can go from this uh, little flimsy looking quarter inch thick steel plate to this half inch steel with uh, wet bolts. And so you can see it's uh, obviously a huge difference. Uh, the bolts are the same size, uh, but what they are, they're wet bolts. So there is a, you can see here, there's a zerk there that is on the end that you can attach a grease gun to. And then you can see the little hole there that uh, the grease will come out of. And then these kits include these um, upgraded bushings so that when you um, have it all together, you can push grease through there. And you know, it's supposed to offer a, a better ride for your trailer. And you know, hopefully uh, some people I have seen on forums have said that these things can bend. Um, I don't know, maybe if you overload your trailer, but anyways, we're hoping that they might help us uh, just get a better ride out of our trailer and it also helps eliminate that horrible squeakiness that you will get from single axle trailers. So that's a major annoyance with a lot of people and this will help alleviate that completely. But again, one thing that we ran into uh, is a major problem that people with single axle trailers are going to need to check out and that has to do with the top rear hanger that hangs off of the frame that the uh, upper shackle will go through. So I'll show you here with the old one. What it's gonna look like is like this. It's, this is gonna be hanging off the frame, this piece, and your shackle is gonna be hanging there, and then your leaf spring is gonna be hanging from here and going off like this. But when we took it apart, we found that there was a major issue with the way that they uh, have this hanger off the frame. Now, depending on your frame, or manufacturer of your trailer, you may or may not have this issue, but I suspect the majority are gonna have this issue. And here you can see what the problem is. Now this is the top bolt that was hanging here. So let me get off frame here so you can see it. But you can see how it's completely worn away, or not completely, but it's has started to wear, wear away this bolt. And it's doing it on both ends. And basically that's because what's happening is uh, this is a this is a replacement shackle here or a replacement hanger 
but uh, this one has a bushing inside of it that you can see here. Well, the ones on all these Coachman single axle trailers and probably a lot of Forest River and every other brand, they don't have this bushing inside of here. And so what happens is that bolt is basically riding on the edge of the hanger. Again, this is going on a Coachman and I guarantee you the majority of trailers don't have this steel insert coming off of your top rear hanger of your single axle trailer. And so what happens again is this bolt is in here and the pressure of the trailer is coming down and it's basically pushing on that uh, bolt, this top bolt, and then wearing, it's riding right on this edge and this edge. So where my middle finger and my index finger are. Again, imagine this insert not there. And so that bolt is riding on there and that's what it's doing. It's completely wearing it out. Our trailer again is a 2018 Coachman Apex Nano 193 BHS. Weighs about 4,000 pounds completely loaded up when we were traveling with all of our stuff. And uh, um, it has, we calculated around 9,500 miles on it right now. So in 9,500 miles, it did this um, less than two full years. Again, depending on your brand of trailer, you're definitely gonna wanna get under there. Really the only way that you can figure this out is by taking the wheels off, jacking everything up, and taking apart the hangers to see if it's worn away. Now, you can look in there and you can see if your hanger has this insert like I showed you. You know, you're either gonna see a bolt or you're gonna see a split insert. Now, this um, is a split insert. This is not a complete bushing. A bushing is, well, I guess you could argue that a bushing could be split, but because uh, they are, but um, this is a solid brass bushing that you get with the upgrade kit. And so there is a difference uh, just when you're talking about the brass bushing versus this style um, bushing, if you will. This is just steel. So you're gonna have a steel bolt riding on a steel bushing. And again, it's gonna have a Zerk fitting in there to squ squirt some grease through. But you do, if you have the split style, you're gonna have the grease just squirting right out of there. So anyways, um, this uh, again is a replacement hanger from e-trailer. When I called my local shop to ask them about how they deal with this fix, they said basically we either, uh, depending on how bad it is, we either fill the hole up with welding material, so they just weld on it and then re-drill the holes. They'll either do that or they'll cut off the original hanger and then weld one of these hangers right on. This is the same one. This is a 3050, I believe it's what it's called, or 3020. And um, they'll weld this same exact one right onto there. They'll either use your old uh, shackle kit, which goes in there just fine, it fits, or they'll, um, you know, if you want to pay for it, you can upgrade to the Dexter axle kits. And usually at the good trailer shops that are around you, they're going to be selling all these bolts and shackles individually because of the different sizes that are out there. That so. is the big thing that you need to figure out is whether or not that bolt, that top bolt is worn out on your upper shackle. And if it is, then, you know, I really would suggest continue watching the video to see my DIY fix. Now, it's not the best fix because um, I don't have a welder. And if I had a welder, then I could fix this a lot easier. And let me just sort of get into that now. So basically what I decided to do was say, okay, on my shackle, and you can see some video of it here, of the oblong hole that the uh, got worn into it. And just looking at the hole here, you can see how after a long time or after a few years, you know, five, six years, this is gonna wear out like crazy. So this is definitely something you wanna try to address as soon as possible. But what I decided to do was I had two options. I could either go to the shop that I called and have them weld on a new shackle, which they told me was gonna run anywhere from 350 to $400 just for the labor um, because of the time it takes to drop the axle off or to, to drop the axle out, to cut them off, to weld these back on, to paint it. And for them, they, like I said, and it's a very good trailer shop. I would trust them doing it, but I didn't really want to spend that much money. So I went online and I said, well, is there a bushing I can find, a steel bushing that I could use with my regular drill bits to drill out the hole and then push in a bushing essentially, just like you see here. What I found was that because of the normal 
uh, size diameter drill bits, you're kind of limited on the availability of bushings that you can buy off the shelf, either off online or locally, you know, the outside and the inside diameters so that, you know, for number one, you can get the bolt through it. And number two, you can put, press it through the hole that you're going to be drilling out. Now, again, one of the things that you have to consider is depending on how far gone or how, how oblong your hole is, mine wasn't too bad, luckily, uh, and I was able to drill out the hole. The, the minimum was going to be 11 16 so I had to use an 11 16 a drill bit to take out uh, the minimum amount, amount of material to make that hole completely round again from being oblong. So that's going to be your issue. If you have a trailer that's kind of, you know, five, six, ten years old and you get under there and you look at it and it's just completely like egg shaped, you're going to probably have to take it to the shop and have them cut them off and weld on these new ones. Or like I was saying, they could, they could technically weld in just some material, fill it in and then drill, tap and drill a new hole. But uh, then you have to worry about, is it um, perfectly straight and all that stuff that comes with uh, drilling into two separate tabs like you see here. So anyways, um, basically what I did was I found a guy on eBay that, uh, because again, I don't have a lathe, I don't have a welder. Um, I was asking around locally on like next door if somebody had a lathe that they could make me some bushings that I could press into the 11 16 hole that I was going to drill. So I needed a bushing that was basically uh, just over 11 16 so about 0.682 uh, I believe it was. And then the inside diameter has to be uh, just a little bit bigger than 9 16 which is the outside diameter of the bolts. So trying to find a, a bushing that specific size, uh, that steel, is very difficult. Now the closest thing you can get to it is the brass bushings that they sell with the Dexter kit, or you can get a pack of these by themselves. The problem is, is that when, um, and I tried this, is I tried to press this into my 11 16 hole. These are a little bit bigger. These are about six point, um, yeah, 6 point, um, nine six outside diameter. So for 11 16 hole, these were too big. And what happened is it basically, as I was trying to push it in, it um, crushed the bushing down enough. So now the bolt won't even go through it. So that's not gonna work. You really wanna use steel if you can. The most ideal thing I was trying to get was taking a piece of steel uh, that I could uh, push into here that was gonna be big enough to press a brass bushing into, and then that would be like the most ideal situation to have the bolt riding on brass rather than steel. But then you have to drill a much bigger hole. It takes a lot more effort and it's just not worth it. So anyways, I got this guy to make me these, uh, like I said, these bushings that are pretty much a specific size. I was able to drill this 11 16 hole. It's not perfect because you don't want this uh, bushing spinning around inside of the a hanger. You don't want it spinning around inside of here because all it's going to do then is wear out this hole even more. So you want it to either be a super very hard press fit like you have with that with this style or you want to be able to weld it like tack weld it in there or whatever. Again I don't have a welder so what I'm going to do is my press fit is barely press fit into there. It's just I can do it by hand and I'm just going to tack some JB Weld onto there and hope that it holds. I mean, I've had JB Weld and seen it used on other projects by people for a lot of other crazier things and it's worked out fine. So I'm hoping that it'll just hold this bushing inside of my shackle just perfectly fine and then there won't be an issue. I already set it up on one side of the trailer to make sure it would work properly and it looks like it's going to be just fine. So enough with the talking, let's get out next to the trailer and let me show you guys the issue and how you can hopefully fix it yourself. Okay guys, so here we are out at the trailer and I already have the other side done. So we're just gonna do this side all completely together so that you can see exactly what you need to look for and what you need to do. Now again, first thing you need to do is take the trailer and get it jacked up by the frame, not by the axle. You need to have the axle hanging so that you can manipulate it to you know line up the bolts with the holes on each side 
and it's just that's the way you have to do it so anyways i'm going to get this uh, back shackle off we're going to check out that top hole that i spoke about we see how bad it is i don't know exactly how bad it is right now like i said i only took off the uh, driver's side one first i haven't taken this one apart so first things first is uh, we're going to get the air wrench we're going to take off those uh, nuts on the other side of it that's the one thing you need to remember is that these uh, shackle bolts are pressed into this bracket this shackle itself they are not gonna they will turn eventually but they are not made to turn on this side so do not turn uh, the head of the bolt go on the other side and take off the nut like you're supposed to So the outside shackle will always come off pretty easily. And depending on how the axle's hanging, what you'll need want to do is get that jack and just sort of see where you have to go to uh, get the other side out. There we go, put a little pressure on it, came, comes right out. So just like that. That's why those jacks are really nice so that you can just, you know, crank it a little bit like you need to until it lets the pressure off. So, all right, so let's check out our bolts. Oh yeah. So you can see here, definitely looking not good. You guys can see that right there. They're wearing not as bad as the other side, uh, but definitely not good. It looks like on this side, the outside of the bolt has worn down more than the inside. On the driver's side of the trailer, it was the opposite. So that's kind of interesting. Um, we do have a little bit, show you guys here, a little bit oblongness going on. You can see that right there. You can see how the metal is all mushroomed up. And then if you take the shackle itself you can, well, that's not a good representation let me get a bolt coming from the back side you can see exactly what I'm talking about with how that that pole just turns into an oval more or less so again this side isn't as bad as the other side which is kind of surprising because the refrigerator is on here on this side. So what we're going to do is first we're going to drill out that hole with a uh, 5 8 drill bit and then we're going to step it up to an 11 -six. Okay guys, so you can skip ahead or watch this part, but I want to show everybody the process that I had to go through to repair the hangers for the bushing that I had made. Now again, you have to remember that you have to accommodate the inside diameter or the outside diameter of the wet bolt. So wet bolt is 9 16 You have to have it a little bit bigger so that there's a little bit wiggle room just by, you know, a tenth. And so you have to accommodate that and then figure out what size outside diameter, you know, your drill bits can drill and then have a bushing made to accommodate that. So it's not gonna be the same size for everybody. For me, I determined I could drill an 11 16 inch hole. I could get a bushing made that was just over 11 16 inch outside diameter. The inside diameter was just over 9 16 to accommodate that wet bolt. And then as you can see here, what I did was I just drilled out each tab individually so I could hopefully not make the hole any bigger than what it was going to be just by drilling but because you're hand holding it and not super steady it is going to be sort of bigger so you might want to do this first and then determine what your hole size is to actually have the bushing outside diameter made specifically so you could press it in with an actual c-clamp now my hole because it wasn't like I said, super steady drilling it was a little bit bigger. And so because I already had the bushings made, they didn't fit in super tight, but they do go in hand tight. I was able to push them in by hand. And then all I'm gonna do to hold them in is put a bunch of JB Weld on the inside of the hanger where you can see the hanger and the bushing meet each other. And so uh, I didn't get that on camera, but it seems to be holding really well. And you can see there, I, was, I had to tap the bushing in with the hammer to finish it off. 
and then I'll get the JB Weld on there and then you can move on to actually finishing the install of the wet bolts and the shackle kit. Okay guys, so now we're gonna be working on the front bolt. This front bolt here is actually pressed into this bracket. I'll show you, this is the replacement wet bolt for it. And if you can see that there, you can see it's knurled on the inside of it. So that's what I was saying when you were doing, doing the shackles, you can see that these, these don't spin because these are the same thing. These are knurled just like this and they're pressed into this, uh, this uh, shackle piece here. You can hammer them out because over time they just work themselves loose um, just from friction. But uh, what you need to do is you gotta press this, in, this one in there and it is really freaking hard. Um, I only have a, an old grandpa's C-clamp sitting around and so there's a few things that I have uh, figured out to get this in and again this is only if you decide to install these wet bolts from uh, to have the zerks on the inside of your trailer because again if we put them so that the zerks are here um, facing us then it's going to be very difficult to get a grease gun onto the zerk there to actually uh, put grease through there when the wheel is on there. Now, I don't, you're not gonna be greasing these things too much because if you do, they're just gonna squirt out of the sides here on the inside of these brackets and then it's gonna collect dirt and you know, that's just not good, it's not what you want. So it's not like you're gonna be greasing these all the time. So it's not necessarily um, something you have to do. I'm just gonna do it just so that if I don't wanna take the wheels off or if there's no need for me to take the wheels off, I can access the Zerks. So that's gonna require us to be doing a brand new press fit on the other side of the bracket which has not had that before so we're doing a fresh one what we're going to do is try to uh, do it as best as we can with the tools that we have available um, so i'll show you that in a second so let me get this off of here okay and again this is a thing where you're going to want this um, jack here under the axle to manipulate this to take the pressure off of here so you can hammer it out or whatever so there's some type of pressure on it now but you're gonna have to hammer this bolt out of here it doesn't take much but now it's bound up because of the pressure on here the other thing is i don't have the other side of the axle attached because i'm waiting for the jb weld to set on the top bracket so I don't have the uh, back side of the other side of the axle attached. I have a feeling it's gonna fight me here uh, trying to get this uh, figured out because it's already all cockeyed. Let me see if I can. Another thing you can do is take a socket extension, hammer it through. extension stuck in there okay it's got pressure on you lower it so there you can see because the back side of my other side is not attached that's what's gonna happen and rotate it on me so let me go get that other side stabilized before I move any further and I'll get back to you guys in a minute. Okay, I got that other side taken care of. Got it jacked up with a brick over there. And again, that happened because the other side, uh, the back hanger is not attached right now because I'm waiting for that JB Weld to set. So be careful, put a jack or something under the perch before you you know, uh, take any of this out because you saw how that, that's what saved me right there was this little jack here. So anyways, enough of being mom. I'm gonna lower this down. Again, a little uh, point I can give you is that, again, so that the uh, when you're doing the bushing here, so that it's not fl flying all around or sort of uh, jerking all around on you, is you can lower your jack down just till the uh, bushing is completely exposed and then you're leaving the top of the spring, the actual rounded piece of the spring here, 
uh, captured in the bracket, so from side to side. So that'll be a good way to uh, uh, let you get the uh, bushing out and push the new one in. So let me find my hammer here, and we'll get this. We'll get this one out. All right. So that one's a little mucked up there. Our new bushing. So here's where I start to put in the front bushing to the spring and I ran into an issue where the spring hole was really tight compared to the back spring hole. And so I was trying a couple different ways to get the bushing in and you got to remember that the whole goal here is to make sure that you don't mushroom over the brass bushing so that the bolt won't fit through there. So what I tried first here is you can see me I used the old shackle to actually hammer the brass bushing the majority of the way in there but it didn't actually go all the way through and so I had to eventually get a C-clamp and finish pushing it all the way in and then when I put the bolt through it actually was kind of tight but it was just deceiving because of how tight the actual spring hole was and then once I worked it a little bit with the uh, bracket and the bolt it worked free and then once I actually put grease into it it felt much better so just be aware you might run into something like that Here it goes, it's just gonna have to wear away. So again, depending on your setup, may or may not easily go in there, but there it goes. You just needed, needed some leverage on it. So anyways, that steel bolt will wear away what it needs to on that brass bushing and you'll be able to squirt the grease in there and be good to go. So now we're gonna hammer this, other, in, this bolt into the other side. And this is the thing you gotta remember is that you got this zerk there. So you can't just go crazy hammering on it. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take one of the old bolts and the knurls are pretty much wear down. But what we can do is we're gonna hammer it in first. We're gonna just hammer the hell out of it. Try to create some of those knurls in the metal. I'm also gonna put the impact wrench on it and we're gonna spin it around in there to try again to make a little bit of wiggle room for these new neurals to get into there because trust me, even doing that, you'll still have tons of pressure you gotta put on this to get it in. Um, I didn't necessarily wanna completely crank on it with the air gun onto the nut and possibly screw up the threads. So that's why I'm trying to um, hammer it in and then I'll press it in. So what we're gonna do is we've got uh, well, I have another socket, but we'll put it on there like this to protect the the uh, zerk and Then we'll just push it in from the other side. We'll hammer on that a little bit So let me show you guys how that's gonna work All right, what you're seeing here is I'm installing my wet bolt from the inside of the trailer So that the zerk is facing the inside of the frame not facing the tire my grease gun doesn't allow me to get onto the Zerk while the tire is on, and depending on the grease gun that you have, you may or may not be able to actually get onto that Zerk while the wheel is on the trailer and the tire is in the way of it. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating some new notches with the old bolt so that I can get the new wet bolt started once I get ready to press it in and you have to remember that in this position that I have the spring in right now is not how you want to install the bolt you want to make sure that if you whatever side you decide to put it in that you put your spring up in position first because your your wet bolt has to be pressed into the bracket with the spring in the correct position so just remember that that you don't press in your bolt without the spring up in there because then you're going to have to hammer it out and start all over again so again what you're seeing me here doing is creating the new notches to get that new wet bolt started once i get to pressing it in a little 14 millimeter that again we'll put over the zerk and then on this side we'll use the 11 16 to capture to let that bolt come all the way through we'll put the c-clamp on it and then on my c-clamp luckily it has a little handle that i can put this little pipe on because you're definitely going to need that so like i said unfortunately using these old bolts 
uh, their neurals really, they don't do too much, just does a little bit to help you get started. And then the other thing is you're trying to make sure that you are properly coming through this hole that the shoulder that the shoulder of this bolt isn't getting hung up on this hole because otherwise you'll be hammering on it or pressing on it whatever you're doing to try to get it to come through and it's not going to come through basically this other side here uh, barely uh, goes right onto the uh, outside diameter of this this bolt here so make sure you do that correctly and the other thing don't forget to push your spring up before you put your bolt in you got to have your spring in place to do this so we're gonna jack that up okay so we're gonna get this jacked up and what we're gonna also have to do is we're gonna have to shift it forward again because it's not attached on the other side you kind of gotta move the axle and your jack at the same time crank it up into place so that's about as good as we're gonna get so again now we're gonna take this and we're just gonna hammer on it a little bit to try to get it started to stay into there here again make sure coming through there right Okay, so now here's the process of me getting installed the wet bolt completely after the spring is up in position. So you can see previously the spring was down below this perch here and now it's up inside of the bracket with the wet bolt through it. And so once you get it started, again, you wanna make sure that that outside shoulder uh, that the nut goes onto is in the hole, that it's not up against the side of the hole or anything, that your bolt isn't cockeyed because when you're hammering on it or trying to put a C-clamp on it, you might actually be pushing on that shoulder and not actually pushing the bolt through. Now again, because I was putting this bolt in on the inside of the trailer frame where I had to create new notches or new keyways for the notches to go through, I actually decided to put the air gun on it and do a couple zips so that I could use the neurals on the bolt to give me a little bit more room. I was hoping it would uh, knock some material off instead of using a ream or anything like that. You don't want to make this hole too big. So doing that with putting a couple zips on it with the air gun uh, allowed it to ream out the hole just enough so that I was able to hammer on it to get it in there uh, good enough. And then you'll see here in a second where I'll actually attach the C-clamp and finish pushing the bolt all the way through. Now remember, you have to use sockets on the outside of the bolt on each side so to protect the zerk and on this side to allow the uh, screw uh, the rest of the screw to come through and then that way um, you can actually press the wet bolt all the way through I said you want to make sure that your uh, zerk fitting there is uh, protected properly you can see here how it's all centered up and my clamp is against the uh, is going the direction I'm going to be turning so it's against the spring on this side on the other side it's against the frame so you can see how that's set up and so now most likely what you're going to need is you're going to need a C-clamp with a handle on it like this not a wing nut you're not going to get it with the wing style old style and you're gonna need a, a little breaker bar or something to help you turn it. So you can see how far, you can see that how far we have to go there to get that continue to push in all the way. Might not look like a lot, but it is. <laughs> now here's where you wanna just go slow and steady. You wanna make sure that your uh, zerk is properly protected as I said before. And what can happen here is just because of the amount of pressure you're going to be putting on this is that the uh, clamp and the uh, sockets that you have on the bowl are going to tend to slip. And so you just have to back off the pressure and readjust the clamp and do that a few times until you can get into it. So what I ended up doing was because there was just so much pressure required 
and it was just not going to happen is that I ended up using again the air gun to uh, zip the bolt a little bit and shave off some of those knurls and then I was able to actually use the air gun uh, with the nut to finish pulling it all the way through. It's not the best way to do it because you can definitely strip out the threads when you put the air gun on it trying to pull the, the bolt through with the nut so I don't really recommend that but as a last resort to finish pulling it all the way through it uh, will usually work out pretty well. All right, so that pulled it through. Sometimes that's what you can do is you can just put the air wrench on it. I didn't want to really do that because I was worried about messing up the threads. We'll see how uh, that was an old nut. All right, so not the best, but put some blue Loctite on there, hammer it down, call it a day. But that's basically what it takes to get all of this together. You can see it's not easy at all. Definitely gonna take some work, definitely gonna take some tools. And uh, I think it's fair enough or easy enough to do, but you're gonna have to be committed. So now the last part is to get this shackle, rear shackle fitted into here. And again, we're going to be coming in from the back side so that we can access the Zerks whenever we want to. And again, this one requires some manipulation because of, like I was mentioning earlier, that the way these bolts are pressed into here, that they are not completely straight when they're out here. You can see that by, you know, you would think that this would just go right onto here and fit on like it's supposed to, but it doesn't. It actually is off just by a little bit if you can see it let's see if you can see it in here it just will not go into there and you have to spread it apart figure out a way to spread it apart basically it means you just have to manipulate the crap out of this thing to try to get it in there properly so enough chit chat we're trying to get it started here first we're gonna start by now we're drop down to where we need to be Basically, you can just see from the front. So, looks like we actually need to go up. Okay, give it a little tap. Just don't hit your zerks. Get that back in there. Now, get one started. Basically what you gotta do is you gotta figure out some way to open this up. You can see you push against it. Actually use this one. Oh, there we go. We got it. Oh yeah. Okay. Now these you don't need to necessarily use the air wrench on. You're just trying to cinch them down. You don't want to get crazy on them. And you can basically just feel them stop. Give them a good, good crank. Again, I don't think you need to use the air wrench on them. And then that's it. Okay, so there you have it, guys. That's pretty much it. You saw it definitely takes a little bit of work to get this accomplished. Now I got my grease gun here. We're gonna give it some squirts. Get this baby lubed up. see here on the front the grease came out of both sides and that's ideally what you want so that's really great you hear how on the bottom the grease came out the one end and on the top it came out the other but it didn't didn't come out both sides like the front 
Okay guys, so now that we got the uh, wet bolt kit installed, I wanted to give you guys a view of the actual kit itself in action. We're gonna go drive around the neighborhood right now and show you how there is absolutely no squeaking, no noise coming from the trailer now. It's awesome how quiet it is. I really wanted to you know, take some video to show you guys exactly how it's working. So let's check it out. As far as the installation goes on this one, I'd say it's about an 8 out of 10. Depending on your skill level and the tools that you have available, I think it's really going to determine whether or not this is an easy install for you or not. The kit itself, if you don't have to deal with that top bracket issue, the hole being worn out, if you don't have to deal with that, this is a no problem install. Uh, although you are going to need all these jacks, you're going to need the pump jack to get under the axle. And you might even need a second person just to make it easier for on yourself. So, you know, to keep that in mind, we'll definitely keep you guys updated and do a long term video review on the kit itself. We're going to take it all apart, you know, next year at this time and see how the bushings look, see how the bolts look, you know, and just see how everything wore throughout the year. We'll probably be doing about, you know, three to five thousand, six thousand mile um, trips this year. So uh, we'll see how that holds up and we'll probably be definitely putting putting it through its paces. So stay tuned to the channel, hit that subscribe button so that you get alerted and updated when we come out with the video on that. Also hit that subscribe button for the other videos that we're going to be coming out with for uh, upgrades and replacement parts on your trailer. Everything from solar to inverters to uh, electric lift jacks, uh, tires I mean it goes on and on and on we've done a lot to this trailer we're gonna be sharing it with you guys to help you decide whether or not you should invest your time or money in doing upgrades like that like if you like subscribe and check out the other videos thanks for watching nailed or failed reviews